crosses. We thank you, Father, for your grace, which is sufficient for us day by day. We thank you, Father, for your mercies that are new every morning. We thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. We thank you, Father, you've raised us from sin to a new life in you. We thank you, Father, that as we sit and wait for you, Father, you come. We thank you, Father, that as we allow you, you work in our lives. And Father, you don't let us stay in that mould that the world would press us into or that others would speak to us and tell us what we are. But Father, you raise us up Amen. by your power and through your grace to be more, Father, than what anyone could imagine, more effective, more powerful, more loving, more able to forgive. And Father, we're just ever so grateful to you. We just pray now, Father, as we just share a little time around your word, that, Father, you just come and minister to us what it is we individually need and corporately need. And, Father, we'll leave this place with a rich deposit Amen. of your truth, Father, having embedded itself in our spirit. Amen. And we'll go out, Father, and live life in a different way. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to just read from Isaiah 61, verses 1 to 3. It says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, <clears throat> to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Then I want to have a look over into Luke chapter 17, verses 20 and 21. And it says, Now Jesus was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, and he answered and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, See here or see there. For indeed the kingdom of God is within you. And that's my topic this morning. I want to talk a little bit about the kingdom of God. It's a huge topic to cover and you just have to pick out a few bits and pieces. But the thing that I really wanted to um, concentrate on is this thread of the truth of the kingdom that runs right through the scriptures, the reign and the rule of God. And there are interchangeable terms in the, in the uh, scriptures. We have kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God in particular. Matthew uses kingdom of heaven because he's writing to the Jews. Mark and Luke use the term kingdom of God, so they're used interchangeably and they actually both just mean that it's the rule of God. Now, wherever there's a kingdom, we don't understand kingdom today because we live in a democracy. So we've got an elected government, we've got two, two or three parties, different, various parties, we've got the prime minister, your opposition, all this stuff's going on all the time. Nobody has the major say. But in a kingdom, the king is supreme yeah. and he has a realm over which he rules, it's got boundaries. He has uh, subjects who are submissive and obedient. And, uh, and it's a totally different thing. Like he was some, that something was about to happen. Yeah, we've said that a lot, haven't we? Yeah. We've felt something's about to happen <laughs> in it, from a Christian perspective in our community. And we haven't seen it yet, but there's like this air of expectation. John was ushering in, in those times, something new. And so he came baptising and preaching and he said in those days, John, Mark says, in those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying repent 
for the kingdom at heaven is at hand. So why was there repentance needed? Why did he call these religious people to repentance? Because heaven was at hand and the only way to have any level of access to the kingdom of God was going to be through repentance, a heartfelt change, and everybody needed to repent. That was the way it was, just the same as, you know, we've had to repent. People come to the Lord, have to repent. Why? Because every one of us rebellious, has been a rebellious at some stage against God. We've all rebelled. You know, we've all like sheep. It doesn't say just some of us, just the really bad people. No, every one of us has rebelled against God. And so in this time, John comes with this message of repentance and acknowledgement that they had rebelled and in rebelling, they had refused and resisted God's rule in their lives, which is not, you know, the rule of God in our lives is the best thing that could happen to us. You know, because he helps us to live life the way that he intended that we should live. And so then he called these people to repentance, that they, they needed to repent. And, 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 and it, was a, it, was a, it was not a repentance, it was not, it was not a, a repentance and a baptism that would bring them into the kingdom of God in, that, in one sense, because it was a baptism looking forward to the remission of their sin, which was achieved in Jesus, which was down the track somewhat. But it was a hard attitude towards God of we want change here, we want to live under your rule, we need to know how to do that. And so this is the message that John came preaching. I want to look at a scripture in Matthew chapter 11 verse 12 and I'm only going to look at half of it to start with. So when you read your Bibles, just read half of it, all right? <laughs> and it says, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, Matthew 11, 12a. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. But the better translation is this. From the days of John the Baptist until now, Jesus speaking, the kingdom of heaven has been breaking forth. That's the meaning of that word. It's not suffered violence in there's attack against it. And I really think it's interesting that I'm not supposed to move too far, am I? <laughs> am I all right, Ken? Um, it's really interesting that it says from the times of John, from the time of John the Baptist. Now the kingdom of heaven had always suffered violence right from the beginning. You know, people were coming out from under the rule of God, just rebelling and so forth like that. So there always been, and the prophets who spoke suffered violence. They were imprisoned, they were died, they were beaten, all sorts of things happened to them because people didn't want to hear that the word that they were actually speaking. But so here we see that Jesus is saying, Something different happened when John the Baptist came. From the time of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven was breaking forth. So John was coming with this new message, this new powerful message of repentance to pave the way for the Messiah that was coming. And I always look at it like this is the kingdom of God and this is the kingdom of darkness. And John's here, he's preaching his little heart out here in the wilderness and people are coming and people are repenting and people are being baptised and it's like this kingdom of God begins to press into the kingdom of darkness, breaking out into a new thing that God is wanting to do. That's what is happening. And so this whole kingdom, this whole thing of the preaching of John the Baptist was a paving the way for what God wanted to do. And, uh, you know, there's a sense in which we need to be there today, that we need to be open to God to allow more and more in an increase, increasing way in our lives, the rule of God in our lives, even when other people don't understand what God's doing for us in us personally. And we need to be bowing our knee and bowing our will to God to be able to rule and reign in our lives to bring about the change to do the things that he's wanting to do in us and in our community and so the kingdom of Suff had suffered violence but now we see this kingdom is advancing because John the Baptist has come in the um, for, in, in the right time he's prepared God's prepared the whole situation in Israel at that time and he's speaking the word and people are coming so something is about to happen while all that's going on over here we see that something's happening in Jesus' life over here too. And so we see that Jesus 
while John was there, and John was involved in this one, that Jesus came and he was baptised. Why was he baptised? Because it was a whole identifying himself with mankind. He, 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 he identified himself with sinful man who would need to be baptised. He identified the fact that they, that with their sin. He identified with the fact that they needed to repent. And then after he had done that and been obedient because that was what the Father wanted, then the anointing came. He he had been obedient then he experienced the anointing which all of which was a preparation for his ministry and then he endured that terrible exhausting uh, temptation in the wilderness when he was out there for 40 days then tempted by the devil and um, and uh, overcame and allowed God to do things in his way you know, he could have short, he wouldn't have been successful, but he could have short-circuited and made bad choices. But he didn't. He chose to do what God, he allowed the rule of God in his life and overcame so that that was a preparation also for what was to come for him. And so he came out of the wilderness and he went to Nazareth, which is, he was very well known in Nazareth. There he was. There he was, um, uh, he'd been brought up, everybody knew him. And he went into the, into the synagogue in Nazareth and they gave him the scroll to read and he, and he took the scroll and he read that passage from Isaiah 61 that I read, that the Spirit of the Lord was upon me because he's appointed, anointed me and so forth like that. And he read out this and then he said these amazing words. He said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your sight and so he 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 come to this he, this is what he'd come for he come for this very time and very purpose and and this was an insignificant man he he went from there and um, for an ins insignificant man from an insignificant town, Nazareth. You know, they said of Nazareth, can anything good come out of Nazareth? You know, we say about that some places around Adelaide don't. Can any good thing come out of that place? Well, that's what we like. And that's the place that he came from. But he also came with the same message that John had, had come with. And he said in Mark 1, 14 and 15, now after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying the time is fulfilled the kingdom of God is at hand repent and then he added this and believe the gospel so he added another dimension to what John was saying when he was preaching that the kingdom of God was here and so I just want to backtrack a bit. I just want to say this. You know, John the Baptist was really, really successful in what he was doing. People were coming from everywhere. Lives were being changed, being baptised. He was repr reprimanding the ones that were just coming to <coughs> make an outward show. But things were happening. And then man took him off the scene because Herod put him in prison. But what was man's work was God's plan. John's task was complete. There was nothing more for John to do. He had prepared the way. The kingdom had begun to break forth because of his preaching. And then Jesus could just come and step into that place to carry on the work in the way that had already been prepared for him. People's hearts had been softened. God had done something within them. And Jesus knew that the time that he came was the time that, that it was the right time. It was the God's time. It was the time that was fulfilled. And this is what he said really saying all the preparations are complete there's nothing need nothing more that needs to be done everything is ready now for the gospel to be preached how good is that Amen. God's done it all it's all ready Amen. and you know in, in our church life and in our own lives let's be aware of that that we are living in this kingdom of God that that is the rule of God that God is working that things are happening yes. and that there will be a time of fulfillment of the fullness of what God 
God is wanting to do. We need to take that to heart and we need to believe that. And the kingdom of his hand, it's brought to men. Now is the time for men to know and understand the kingdom. It's made available to people. It's out there. You know, John's been preaching and now Jesus is coming preaching it. It's made entirely possible for people to experience the kingdom of God and all that that means. And so that's this amazing thread that goes through. And then the challenge that Jesus gives them is that they are to believe the gospel. Now we think about the gospel of the good news and it is the good news that we can be saved, that we can have a life in heaven one day. But there's more than that. It's actually the good news of? Kingdom. And what's that? The rule of God in our lives. That's what's made possible to us, that we can have the reign and the rule of God in our lives, not just involved in ritual, not just seeking after all sorts of things, trying to find satisfaction, but we can have the rule of God in our lives and all that that means. That's the good news so that we can have the gospel here, knowing that we have a relationship with God because we've been forgiven, we've repented and been forgiven, but we can come to the fullness of it in the days in the future. But I think many of us live like the good news, that's what we've got. But we've got this amazing life. I don't think we understand how amazing, what an amazing life we have as Christians. And people outside think we're just wowsers and, you know, why don't we do this? And, oh, well, you go to church on Sunday and, well, you don't listen to that stuff, do you? You know, all of that. But we have the best life, uh, the opportunity of the greatest life that anybody could have under the rule and reign of God because that's how he planned that we should win. That's how he created us for, for relationship with him. And he wants us to enjoy all the benefits of the kingdom that were foreshadowed, everything that was foreshadowed in the Old Testament, the freedom from sin, what, you know, you, you, just the burden of sin sometimes in, in your life is just the guilt that comes and all of that. And we can be free of all of that, living under the rule of Christ as just, God, I've done it again, you know, just the confession and, and the freedom that all of that brings and know that we have a future as well. So we have this thread, Old Testament, John the Baptist um, and Jesus. And then we have, I love chapter two of um, Mark, chapter one of Mark. After Jesus comes and preaches about the kingdom of God and so forth, we see him putting into practice, he, he actions the kingdom. There's the action of the kingdom of God. And we go through Mark chapter one and it's amazing. I remember when this hit me like a ton of bricks at some stage. And Jesus, first of all, we see the action of the kingdom in him calling men, yes. calling men. So he went out and he called these disciples. Simon, Andrew and James and the son, son of Zebedee and John, his brother. And he was making the kingdom of God available to them. Come follow me. That's what he said. He was making the kingdom, this big invitation. Come and follow me. It was made available because the time was ready, but they needed, needed to make the choice. Now, if you're listening today and you are being called, you have that sense in your heart that you need to do something about your relationship with God for the first time, you're being called, but you need to make a choice, make the right choice. And he does call each one of us at some time into the kingdom. We can respond and become his followers, or we can respond, we, not respond and stay outside the kingdom. Kingdom. Next, we see the action of the kingdom in his teaching. It said, then they went into Capernaum and immediately on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his teaching, for they taught him as one having authority. I read this. Uh, about um, Jesus. Jesus was a rabbi, so he'd been trained in the school of the rabbis. And there were various levels of graduation. So at the second to last level, the rabbis could graduate, and then, this is my word, but they could graduate, and then they could go and they could teach what their rabbi had taught them. So to be like, you know, someone listening to Michael, and he said, now you can go out and what I've taught, all right? They couldn't teach anything else. 
But if you got, and not everybody got past that, not all the, rab all the trainee rabbis got past that point, but some of them went on to the final level. And in the final level, once they graduated from there, they weren't restricted to teaching what um, their rabbi had taught them because the whole discipleship system you had a rabbi and you had the disciples who you know they would teach them and stuff like that so even when they were training in the schools of the rabbi they, rabbis they did that and so um, geez, geez, when they said when they graduated from that last level they could actually go out and didn't, they weren't confined to teaching the teachings of their rabbi they could add other truth, other things there, or their interpretation. And that's exactly what Jesus did. And that's why they said he taught as one having authority. It was the authority under God because he was speaking the words of God. And if you read through, say, just for instance, uh, the Sermon on the Mount, yeah. then he would said. The law says this, but I say unto you. And so the external of the law was superseded by the internal of the heart, by the attitude of the heart. And so his, and there's so many things that Jesus taught that were uh, um, a step above what the law said. And this is the kingdom living that we are to be in. And so he was talking about that. So he, I'm supposed to be going through these points quickly. And so he, was, um, he, he demonstrated the kingdom by the way that he taught. He demonstrated the kingdom... Um, showing authority over the demonic. Can you imagine? So thinking about this, imagine that we're sitting in church here and we're all nice and doing the right thing and looking really lovely in our church clothes. And and the lady that I remember who used to have her church teeth that she put in on Sundays, because um, <laughs> they were uncomfortable, so she only wore them Sundays. Um, <laughs> and um, we're all sitting here. And there there's a, a manifestation of the demonic. That's what happened in the synagogue, all respectable doing what they were doing. Jesus was there teaching under authority. Everybody was recognising it. And then there's a disturbance in the back corner there. And because this man is demon possessed. And so Jesus exerted his authority. He's come preaching the kingdom. He has power the, in, under the kingdom. There's power over everything. And so he delivers this man from demonic um, um, powers, the action of the kingdom, the kingdom's working out itself. And then we see that there was a healing, went into Peter's household, his mother-in-law is sick with a fever, and so she was healed. And I just not, had this thought this morning, I was going through my notes, he took her hand and lifted her up, and she immediately, the fever left, and she went out and served. Yes. You know, when we are healed and free in the kingdom, that's what we want to do. When we see the power of God in our lives, we want to serve. And then we see this, and this is a key to Jesus' success. It says then that he prayed. Now, he'd had two really busy days going here, someone's house, into the synagogue, de you know, delivering all everything. And then it says early in the morning he got up and went to pray. That's the secret of kingdom life, folks. That's the secret of kingdom life. Seeking God, having a heart that will seek God. It's early in the morning, late at night, middle of the day, wherever we are, it's making time to seek God. And that's what Jesus did. He rose early. And then, and then the next thing we see that somebody didn't understand. So Simon comes and says, you know, uh, those who were with him um, and Simon and those who were with him searched for Jesus. And when they'd found him, they said, everyone's looking for you. But he said, let us go to the next town. And so his agenda was to do the will of the Father. And when we live in the kingdom, you know, Jesus had a really successful ministry. All the people had come and, you know, the action of the kingdom had been the effect of drawing people um, to, uh, to Jesus for all sorts of reasons. And he could have stayed there being really quite happy and just doing the same thing over in the same spot. There would always be sick people that would always be coming. But he said, no, no. He said, um, let us go into the next towns, S on the end of it, because for this purpose I, had I have come. And he was well aware of the purpose and it was to go further than just where he was at that moment in time. And then finally we see that he healed the incurable, that he healed a leper, because in his heart he was moved with compassion. And so in, in under the will of God we see Jesus teaching about the kingdom, then we see the action of the kingdom.
Actions will always speak louder than words. We can profess with our mouth what, mouth what we like, but we need to action the kingdom in our own personal lives as God begins to speak to us and make changes, and we need to be intentional about that. We need to have a plan to bring our lives in every area, whatever it is, into line with God, having the rule of God in our lives. And then we need to action the plan as God prompts us. It may be to pray for somebody, it may be to constantly witness to somebody until they come to faith, however long that takes, whatever it is in your life that God's speaking to you, I, I don't know, but whatever it is that God's speaking to you about that's what we each need to be doing, so don't just let be talkers, let's be doers as well because we believe in God who's able to do all things amazingly well and then we see, um, so we've got John, the Old Testament, Kingdom John the Baptist, Jesus, then Jesus actioning the kingdom. And then we've got the disciples. So all the time that Jesus was... I talk too much, is that right? <laughs> the drinking or the talking? <laughs> and so um, the thing about this, when... The, the kingdom of God doesn't follow our tradition. Do you know that? Yeah. It doesn't follow our tradition. Found that out? Yeah. <laughs> when, when a rabbi was ready to have disciples, in Jesus' day, the rabbi would go to the school of the rabbis where the where the rabbis have been trained and he would look around and he would choose his disciples the ones that he was going to teach, the ones that were going to follow him. Jesus didn't do that. Yeah. Jesus went to the Sea of Galilee. Yeah. There's a probability, a possibility, no proof, so don't quote me, <laughs> that the fishermen were fishermen because they'd failed the school of the rabbis. Possibility. Yeah. Because most Jewish boys would go to school and, and a lot of them would become rabbis. But they'd either failed or been rejected in the beginning. And so Jesus broke with tradition and he went to the sea and, and all of his, none of his disciples were well known. He just chose people that were different. They'd come from the wrong side of the track, but he wanted them for the kingdom of God. And so we see he, one day he went up, and he called them, but one day he went up into a mountain and called to him those he himself wanted. So Jesus was making these choices under God, in the kingdom of God. They came to him, then he appointed 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out demons. And Matthew adds, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons, freely you have received, freely give. I want to make these points from these scriptures. That Jesus came to them and called them and they willingly and at great cost left family for long periods of time often that they might be with Jesus and have an itinerant lifestyle. The second thing is that he chose them for this purpose. He wanted them to be with him. How personal is that? I mean, that's the teaching, that's what the rabbis did, that's, that's how it all functioned there in those days. But how amazing that Jesus wanted them to be with him. Yes. And there was a purpose in that. His purpose was for training for discipling, so that they watched. You know, can you imagine the disciples seeing the first miracle? <laughs> Amazing! How did that happen? <laughs> like, can you imagine them chattering about themselves before they went to bed at night? Did you see that? <laughs> and the feeling that they would have had, it would have been amazing. So they watched and they listened. They asked stupid questions sometimes, what we think stupid questions, because they wanted to know more. 
Um, they often misunderstood what he was saying, but it was the, all of that training was for the purpose of sending them out to do something, to action the kingdom. It wasn't for their own sakes, it was to action the kingdom of heaven um, and, and to say the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Same message, same message. And then they would do the various things, heal the sick, deliver de from demons, raise the dead, heal the lepers. And they took up that all of that challenge being so costly. And they knew, Jesus prepared them and said, you know, there's going to be a cost to this. Not everybody's going to love you. In fact, some people will just don't want anything to do with you anymore. You know, it was going to be hard because there was going to be rejection. I love what Jesus taught them. Just move on. That's really what he said. Dust off your feet. Get on with somewhere else. Go somewhere else. You know, there was nothing personal. No, they shouldn't feel the rejection or as if they were less citizens or whatever it was, unworthy or anything like that. Because they were out there preaching the kingdom. Some people wanted it. Some people didn't want it. Move on. Don't take it personally. Can we hear that? Move on when you share and people don't know. Don't take it personally. All right. And then finally, I want to just talk about the kingdom of God. Just touch on the kingdom of God within us. We've got the term the kingdom among us, around us, near us and within us. And in chapter 17, 20, which I read, Jesus said, you know, that the, you can't see the kingdom and it's not coming. Someone said this about it's not coming in a visible kind of way in one sense it's because they were looking for a temporal, you know, earthly kingdom and deliverance. But Jesus said, no, it's not going to be like that. <clears throat> but he said, um, another a translation says, the, I love this, the kingdom of God is not ushered in with a parade. And I thought about... I, th I thought about, um, you know, because they were living under the Romans and they were, they were, in, they were um, there was the warfare and stuff that they were in and the way that they did war in those days. So he's saying there's not going to be horses and chariots and noise and spears and swords and hand-to-hand -hand combat, nothing like that. It's not coming like that at all. It's coming in a totally different way. There's going to be a quietness about it. They've got a personal acceptance of it. That's how the kingdom of God is coming. But it's coming also in power. And it's coming in authority. And there'll be the action of the kingdom. But do you think about the kingdom within you? Can you grasp it? Amen. Do you understand it? Up here you might. Yeah. The rule of God within. But with all the resources then of heaven available to us to live our lives in the way and in the power of the kingdom in the way that God wanted us to live it. it it's, it's breathtaking really. Jesus talked about the kingdom within being like the mustard seed and we know that story really well. The mustard seed within that's so small. It was a black mustard and it used to grow and was in the fields of Palestine um, and, and, and Israel and it was quite um, um, an amazing sight and it used to spread re reasonably quickly from this tiny, tiny seed. And God's planted that seed of the kingdom within man's heart. It's the seed of the rule of God in man's heart. Just like the seed grows under, under the, the right conditions, we need to develop that kingdom within us, that rule of God within us, so that it, you know, and every choice we make that is in line with what God wants for us, that seed grows, yeah. right? Yeah. We pray, that seed grows as we receive that word. We, word of God, that seed grows as we believe, and it begins to grow and grow and grow within us with the right responses. It can do a work within us. It, you know that song that says he, he can make us more than we could ever be. That's what it's about. It's our response to God that changes us and takes us beyond the natural and beyond what God, um, what, what people think that we can be and what we can be. Now, I told you my testimony, you'd be shocked at what I'm really like. I mean, what I was really like. <laughs> Amazed at what God has done. Like, I stand back in amazement at what God has done in my life from when I was 16. And, um, and it grows to be, this seed grows to be far greater than, more effective than any other kingdom. But it grows in the dark of the heart of a man in, in, within. 
And the seed's response to the conditions determines the growth. And our response to what God brings into our lives in all sorts of ways determines the growth that goes on in our life in the sense of the kingdom of God ruling and reign, God ruling and reigning in our lives. So let's just wind up, shall we? Back to Matthew 11:12, and it says this. You can read part B now. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. I like this translation. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven breaks forth. We've talked about that. And those who are breaking forth are pursuing it and pressing into it. And that's where we're at, church. That's where we're at. That's why we need to keep pushing into the kingdom of God, receiving what God is saying, doing what God is telling us to do. And so that we're, it's almost like we've joined John the Baptist and Jesus and we're pressing in to receive out of the kingdom of God and from God everything that God has for us and we will not give up whatever happens we need to keep on pressing in so let me finish with this let us be the people like John's day and God, as God speaks to us about things that are not right let's repent keep short accounts with God let's be like Jesus in our daily lives and action the kingdom yeah. don't just talk about it let's live in the kingdom and action it whatever that means for us thirdly let us be like the disciples living in obedience and and doing what God called them to do in the kingdom of God. And finally, let us be those people who press into the kingdom of God, pursuing it for all it's worth, pressing in and see, see it breaking forth in power and authority that's within the kingdom of God and so that we become people who impact our world. When we, our lives are impacted, the people that we contact are in contact with are impacted Impact, the Flurio's impact, the state's impact, or wherever we go, there's impact because we're living out of this rule of God in our lives, pressing in to take everything that God has for us. Amen. Let's pray. Amen. <clears throat> Father, we thank you that we're not just a little few people gathered in this place in Port Elliot, even in a back street. But, Father, we're part of your amazing kingdom. Your kingdom is within us, Father, and we long that we might allow you to reign and rule in our lives increasingly day by day. Father, we want to be the people who press in and take all that you have for us, Father, living in the authority that is invested in us because we live in the kingdom of God. Father, we want to speak with authority the word of God wherever we go. Father, we want our lives, as we live our lives just daily without speaking at times, to just radiate the love and the compassion and everything that is in the kingdom of God of Christ, that we might li live lives, Lord, that are full of righteousness and peace and joy because we know the rule of God in our lives. Help us, Father, not just to hear a message, but help us, Father, to intentionally live out your rule in our lives. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.